Hello, today I'm going to be talking about The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This came out in 2015 and is the first in the Wayfarers series, uh, which is three books right now. Um, and they are all like standalone novels within the same kind of universe. So they share some characters, um, but they are, it's not like a traditional series. This book follows the crew of the Wayfarer, which is a tunneling ship. So what it, it basically like punches holes in the fabric of time space um, to make wormholes, I guess they're called, uh, and to basically travel instantaneously between different areas of the galaxy. The Wayfarer gets a very prestigious contract to uh, punch a hole in the far distance of the, the galaxy uh, where this new alliance has been formed um, between uh, like th the main commons of the galaxy. I don't remember any of the actual lingo they use, um, but yeah, there's ba there's basically a species that kind of keeps to itself, but has a lot of um, this like special material that people need for things. Uh, and we've made an alliance with them. So we're going out there to punch a hole so it's easier to travel back and forth, but it's like a bit of an unknown space. And it's also a very long journey. So it's like a, a year's worth of time. And of course, a few like antics occur on that journey. Um, but chiefly, this is a book about camaraderie and, and teamwork and empathy. Um, and it was really sweet and I really liked it for that. It's exactly what I kind of wanted from this book. I wanted just like a palate cleanser. Um, but my first issue with it was that it just didn't position itself as such. Um, so it starts out by, by introducing this character of Rosemary, who is going to join the crew of the Wayfarer. Um, and Rosemary has like a big secret and is, is like running away from her family. And I thought the book was gonna be like about her and about hiding whatever she's hiding. Uh, but it just wasn't at all. Like that was very inconsequential. Everyone found out about the secret and they were like, that's fine. Um, and also she uh, wasn't really a main character. She was like part of the ensemble of the Wayfarer. Um, so I kind of like was a bit thrown by that. And then you also have this element of like the geopolitics of them entering this new space and this, this new species and um, you know, all of the kind of like macro uh, issues that that could entail. Um, and it wasn't really about that either. Like it kind of, that kind of came into it a little bit, but it sort of teased that maybe that was going to be the meat. That was going to be like the stakes um, of the book. And it didn't really feel like it followed through on any of those kind of like high stakes possibilities. One thing it did do very well though, is be basically like a parable against racism. Um, so there are lots of humanoid species in uh, this scenario. So humans actually from Earth, we basically got saved by other humanoids from other planet planets in this like galactic empire because we were killing ourselves. Um, and that means that although like some of the crew on the Wayfarer are humans, uh, we just have these, these other species. And obviously they have different looks firstly, but they also have different values um, and different kind of like family structures. And I think the way that that was dealt with was really um, sensitive and brilliant. The way it approached like facing your preconceptions um, about these other humanoid species uh, and kind of like accepting each other and, and your differences. And that's like a very happy clappy kind of uh, thing to talk about. But actually I think it was, it was a really wonderful element of this book. One other thing that I really liked about this, I guess it's not specifically this, it's about sci-fi and about series. Um, and that's like Chekhov's gun. So Chekhov's gun is the rule that if you show a gun in like on stage in act one, it has to be fired by the end of act two. I'm butchering that. You get what I'm saying. Um, I am really uh, laser focused on the fact that when I'm reading standalone novels, everything is there for a reason and there's no kind of like extraneous detail. So if something weird gets said, I'm like, oh, I know that because I know that it's probably going to be involved later somehow. But the thing about sci-fi is you get all of this license to just say stuff to build the world and not necessarily because it's gonna be involved in the plot, which I guess is partly maybe my, my issue with this not being like that high stakes political game is because they said some things that, that influenced me to think that it could have been. Um, so like tricky line to tread, uh, but also it just means that you can like really escape into the world. And then also it being part of a series means that something could be mentioned that then becomes more relevant later on and, and less at the present. Uh, so it was really nice just kind of like letting go of this thing I have when, when reading novels of just like really banking every single bit of, of information um, 
because that that's a less enjoyable way to read and with this I was like well surely not all of these things are gonna be relevant like I'll take note but I won't be just like waiting for it to appear um, and yeah that made it a, a way more enjoyable reading experience I was just like along for the ride I hope you've enjoyed this video on The Long Way to a Small Language Planet by Becky Chambers. Um, let me know if you've read it and specifically if you read any of the other books in this series. Uh, I'm not going to actively pick them up right now, but I might if I get bored or want another palette cleanser, another just like light space opera, um, because this was quite fun. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.